Hey, what's up guys? So when it comes to these bit axes, they're gonna periodically receive some firmware updates, which is gonna to help to add some new features and to fix some bugs. There's a whole team of developers online who are working hard to improve these bit axes. And when there's a firmware update that's released, there's actually three different ways that you can update your bit axe. And we'll go ahead and take a look at all three options. We'll start with maybe some of the simple and easy solutions that most people are gonna to wanna to do. And then we'll also take a look at some of the more advanced solutions, such as for example, maybe an update goes bad and your unit gets bricked. How can you actually restore the firmware and flash it from scratch if need be. So with that said, let's go ahead and hop on over and take a look at how you can update your bit axe. Now starting off here from the main screen in Axe OS, the primary way to update your firmware and what most people are gonna wind up doing is if you go over here to settings and then if you scroll down, there's gonna be an option right down here that shows you your current firmware version as well as what the latest release is. So I check and I can see there's actually a new firmware version that's currently available, 2.4.1. Now this firmware update comes in two different files. First we've got espminer.bin. Uh, this is gonna be the actual firmware update itself and then the second file is gonna be www.bin. And if we download that, that's gonna be the uh, basically updated website UI itself as well. Now you may also need to go over here and tell it that you want to keep these files in case it thinks that it's insecure or something. So we're going to go ahead and keep these two files. Uh, and then once we've got them, they're going to be in our downloads folder. And so after that, we can go first to update the firmware. Uh, we'll click browse, and then it's going to show you here in your downloads folder. We'll start here first with uh, espminer.bin. We'll open that, and it's going to go ahead and start updating the firmware for our bit axe. This process will take a little bit of time. Uh, and then afterwards, once everything is done and all, you're then gonna be able to go over here and update the website. So we'll do that here. Again, you might wanna wait a little bit first. Sometimes the BitAxe will actually restart. So just give it a little bit of time. But once it's up and running, you can go ahead and grab the uh, website update file and then we'll open that. Traditionally, this part does take a little bit longer than the firmware update. So you can give it a little bit more time than the time it took to update the firmware. But once this is done, you now have an updated BitAxe. Then we'll go ahead and uh, refresh the page here now that it's done. And with our bit axe starting back up, if you take a look, you can see now we've got 2.4.1. Now, let's say for whatever reason you want to maybe downgrade to an older firmware. Maybe there's a bug in the newer firmware and you wanna to go to an older one. That's certainly a possibility. To do that, you can go over here to the GitHub page for the ESP miner project, kind of the firmware for the bit axe. Then if you take a look over here under releases, you can see the current version is 2.4.1, but there's a lot of other releases available as well. Uh, now, if you want the latest firmware, we can just click over here on 2.4.1. You can see the full change log for this update. And then you can grab uh, the ESP miner file, the firmware update, and you can grab the website version here. There's also some recovery files that you can manually load in over USB. And then going back to the main product page, if instead of going directly to the latest release, we just click on releases up here. Uh, if you scroll down, you'll actually see a bunch of different releases. So we've got, uh, you know, 2.4.1, like we just talked about, but here's some of the beta firmwares that were released. Uh, they're pre-releases, as you can see. Uh, we've got 2.4.0, the previous public version, etc. So if you ever want to grab, like, maybe an older firmware update, uh, they're all available here. And to do that, you're just going to head to the section that you want. So let's say you want 2.3.0. Uh, you can scroll down, and there's going to be an option here for the different assets. Expand that, and again, you can see, like, the uh, firmware update file and the website update file, so that you can kind of, like, upgrade and downgrade as needed. And then finally, there's also a BitAx web flasher, which is gonna allow you to plug your BitAx in via USB uh, and update that way. This is especially helpful in case maybe your unit gets bricked during a bad firmware update or you're messing around with it or whatever else and you need to reflash it directly over USB. Uh, I'm gonna link to this for you as well, just like everything else that I talk about. I'll put the link here down underneath the like button and let's take a look at how this works. So you'll wanna plug in your BitAx both to power as well as into your computer via USB. Once you've done that, you can come back over here to the web flasher and you'll hit connect and you should see an option here for the USB JTAG. We'll click on that and then hit connect then it should go ahead and connect to our BitAx. Then if you go down here, you can choose which version of the bit axe that you've got plugged in. So in this case, I'm doing the gamma. You can also uh, select the board version, which is typically actually printed on the board itself. And then you can also choose which version of the firmware you wanna go ahead and load directly onto your bit axe. Uh, once you've got it set up, you can just click start flashing and go ahead and update your unit. And so that is how you can upgrade, or I guess also downgrade, your bit axe to whatever firmware version that you want. For more information about the bit axes, of course, you can subscribe and get notified to additional videos. Additionally, you can also click the buttons here on screen to watch some additional videos to learn all about how to use your bit axes.